Welcome to You Talks brought to you by State of You. Welcome everyone back to Set of Youth Podcast, part of the Youth Talk series. Um, we have a very, very special guest today. Ali Zalata is here with us today. Um, and speaking currently is Christopher Kleinans. I am currently 19 years old. I am a mental health activist from Cape Town, South Africa, and I run an organization called Swim for Change, which focuses on mental health awareness, mental health education, and suicide prevention. Uh, and with me today is Ali Zalata. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How about yourself? <laughs> All good. I'm surviving. A little bit chilly, but besides that, it's just keeping warm and carrying on. Um, oh. So, Ali, do you mind telling us a brief, quick, summarized mm-hmm. version of what you do, who you are, a little bit of a history? Yeah, absolutely. So, m- my name is Ali Slater. I'm an artist, activist, and the founder of The Starving Artist. So, The Starving Artist is an artist initiative that uses the power of creative arts to create systemic reform. So, it all started from my own experiences of ill health with an eating disorder that persisted for over 10 years. And I'm, I mean, I came from a very traditional family, um, Eastern European, so mental health was not talked about and medical practitioners saw a diagnosis. They didn't see me as someone suffering from a disease. And really the only way I found a voice to communicate my struggles was through visual arts. And then from there, um, the Starving Artists became a full-on initiative. And so now um, I and the whole team do exhibitions, publications, workshops, um, really try to use art as a way to create impact, but then also help people use art as a tool for processing and communication. Oh, that's, that really is awesome. And why why art? I mean, I, I know art's a big um, way of expressing how an individual feels. Um, I know art's used a lot in terms of, um, you know, with a lot of mental health practitioners in terms of, you know, do some art, relax, connect with yourself, things like that. But why, why did you decide on art as a form of activism? Uh, do you believe that art can help bridge gaps and create an understanding among people? Um, is it perhaps that art's a powerful tool that challenges like societal norms and raising awareness about certain things? What was the reason mainly for using art and what impact did the use of art have? I mean, all of the above, <laughs> I think for <laughs> me personally. Um, I love art because of the way it can communicate authentically and vulnerably. When we're talking about massive issues ranging from mental health to climate change to refugees and migrant displaced persons, you hear so many numbers of the people impacted or um, just really just overwhelmed by data, but you don't necessarily feel it. And what mm-hmm. art is really good at is giving voice behind the numbers of those affected. So it allows you to communicate and really understand those issues on a more deeper and then I would say mm-hmm. genuine level. And it makes you truly understand in a way that is counteracting those big narratives that are being told because you get to have more of a direct, I would say, insight into the well-being and um perspectives of the individual and how they're trying to communicate their struggles or their stories. Wow, that is, that is a really beautiful way to put it, actually. Um, I never really thought of it like that, but it's, that's true. And I mean, art is so powerful in its simplicity, and there's so much you can do with it. But just so the listeners can get a better idea of the type of art that you do, is it more sculpture is it painting is it musical kind of art is it expressionistic or is it a bit of everything um i am a painter primarily uh Mm. when i was in um school i got kicked off of about 12 musical instruments so um i'm (laughs) i'm gonna stick to painting for a while (laughs) (laughs) and i i love just painting because of the way that for me it helps depict memories or really just creates a very visceral image for people to kind of dive into which is something that I try to tap into with my own work and look at lived in experiences and helping people see that grim reality that often happens behind closed doors. Awesome. No, yeah, I, I, me too with musical instruments there. Um, I, I get that feeling. I, I did arts in, in high school and 
Um, I'm surprised they didn't didn't kick me off the easel either, but we move. <laughs> um, and I mean, art is art is highly highly broad and massive. The art industry goes on forever and goes way back into history, and there's just so much behind art. Do you do you mind just explaining a little bit more in terms of how do you use this art activism? Into your into your day life with what you do. How have you gotten it so successful? Is it maybe like a specific example of how art has helped you to challenge some stigmas going around? Um, how did you create such a movement by it? What was the startup? What what created this movement going? How did you get your art out there and recognized so well when there's so much art in the world? Oh my, okay, so many questions, but I'll try I'll try and answer the best that I can. <laughs> Um, so for myself, I think, um, in terms of the work that I do, a great example is, um, a painting called Popping Pills, Popping Bills. And, um, you guys can look at my website or, um, Instagram afterwards, but, uh, giving you a mental image, it's myself and I'm, um, depicted in a painting just surrounded by, um, pill bottles and empty containers. And each one is a different type of medication corresponding to um, my eating disorder. So some was green tea medication or metabolism pills, fat burner. And then I had other pills such as um, coping with anxiety and depression and really pills to help with the effects of me um, taking all these pills to help my eating disorder. And I got lost in all of that. And that's what the mental image is trying to show. And the visual image itself is the fact that I lost my identity to the process of my eating disorder and I became drowned and consumed by it. So when you have a work like that, while not everyone can relate, for those who have that lived in experience, they get to see their voices communicated in a way that um, I would say is often not talked about, right? Nobody wants mm. to talk about what type of pills they're taking or really the struggles of body image and mental well being. But it allows people to see one, that their voices are heard and recognized and that they're not alone, but then also that it allows people to start bridging conversations from these works. So those outside of these lived in experiences get better insight into what their loved ones or those in their community are struggling with. So art, again, is great at that connection based. And not only does that happen in museums or exhibitions and galleries, but art, again, we try to use far beyond that. Um, we use art to, um, have billboard campaigns across the UK. So we have um, one that was in Leicester, Portsmouth, um, Manchester, and Berlin in Germany. And so it takes these private conversations and brings art right into a billboard outside of a grocery store. So it makes it more public and more commonplace. We also do things like um, art campaigns to members of parliament in the UK. So when they're making decisions about mental health reform, they get to see the art and the voices behind the people that they're trying to make decisions for. And then other key ways is that art can be a tool in, um, I would say, just self-processing and reflection. So we have art reflection therapy cards that are recently released and allows people to go through reflective prompts and create artworks and um, really engage on questions relating to both the creation of the art and then the experiences that are behind it. So we have one for eating disorders and body image, one for climate and mental health, you know, the impending fear of all the effects of climate change, and then one in development for um, men and boys' mental health, because often there's strong stigma around that. But um, hopefully that answers most of those questions at least, but really art just has so many ways and avenues that it can help and really connect people. And I really think that we should be looking more at how a diversity of creative voices can be um, impacting because again it's not only my voice that needs to be heard so many people have profound stories all over the world and art is just a platform to help those who may not have other means to do so I mean wow you did a great job Bessie <laughs> answering all those questions thank you 
Um, and just first things first, I definitely think I'll put um, your maybe your Instagram link or website link in the description of the podcast. People can have a look at the different artworks that are out there and um, the one that you described now. But you really utilize art to its maximum from what I can see alone and just what you had to say now. And like you said, art is powerful. And what's key in, in mental health is, is communication. I mean, there's such a massive stigma on talking about mental health. Um, I mean, even you know myself as a mental health activist, I still struggle to speak about mental health purely because of the stigma that's there. But you got to push to speak about it to break that stigma. And I feel the way that you've done it is it's done in such a beautiful way that people can talk about how they're feeling by expressing themselves but through that they're starting such a massive conversation and it's exactly what you're doing which i think is is really really powerful and i mean you've been super successful in that and you're you're already successful at balancing your activism initiatives with a full-time employment i mean as far as i understand you're doing your doctoral studies and your lecture at um, a couple universities from my understanding. How, do you have maybe any tips on balancing this workload while being so, so successful? Um, and of course, you know, maintaining a solid mental health. That's, I, know, I know when I say maintaining a solid mental health, it's always ups and downs, but in a way of maintaining some sort of mental health standard. No, that, that's very fair. I think for me, um, I do want to stress, though, that I am a workaholic, so I love working, and um, I know that for other people, it may not be the same style or method, but what I think is most important is when you're passionate about something, you get excited about doing the work, and so um, while not everybody wants to do art as their form of community engagement or making impact, that's totally fine. But what you really should be doing is making your passion the way that you want to create change or just balance it, right? So um, I think that I, I get excited about the work that I do so it doesn't feel like work, but then also it helps my mental health because I... I get to see the impact when the long, hard work pays off. Um, other things I do want to stress is that everybody's different. Like for me, I, like I said, I, I love working, but I know that some people, they have really big spurts and then they take time to recharge again. And I know that um, other people, they just really want to like power through and get things done. So it's really just trying to find the right balance that works for you and, and know that especially in um, change making spaces that change takes such a long time to see the payoff and um, I mean if change was easy it would be done by now but that's why when we're making these steps and strides it's about I guess appreciating the milestones but also know that it's a lot of hard work and that you're doing your best. <laughs> if change was easy it'd be done by now I love that 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 hits. But exactly what you're saying, everyone, everyone's different. Everyone has their, their own lives going on, their own personal struggles, their own mental health struggles, and they have things that work for them and things that don't work for them. And you just, you just got to find your groove, I'd say. And um, when looking at change making and looking at balancing and stuff, I, it doesn't even have to be with change making. It can be with, you have a goal in mind, you want to achieve a work goal, a personal goal, um, a fitness goal, a life goal, whatever the case may be, there's got to be those two sides of motivation. You've got to be able to motivate yourself into getting that goal, but that goal has to also motivate you. It has to be that two sides motivation. Um, but like you say, when when you reach that when you reach that end goal, it it feels incredible. But I mean, it's clear it's clearly obvious that you're definitely a workaholic there. I mean, you've accomplished so much already and you're still on a massive slope to accomplish more and more and more as things are going, I'm sure. But if someone wants to get involved with arts and express themselves through art and they want to get heard, what is the simplest way to start? If someone wants to start expressing themselves through art as maybe a forms of um, 
therapy for themselves or a form of just expressing and getting the, their feelings out. You know, maybe journaling isn't something they're interested in because they can't do write or they don't know how to express themselves through writing. What's a way that they can express themselves through art? What's a good way to start? Um, so I would say everyone's different. Um, what, what works for me, especially when I'm trying to process my feelings and experiences, is doing a form of, so to speak, like a memory scape. So I think about key moments in my life or ones that I want to reflect on and really use that as the grounding point. So giving an example is often whenever um, I'm dealing with a challenging moment, I, I cry in bed. I'm a big crybaby, right? <laughs> so I, I absolutely just like break down and just go under like the bed and hide in the sheets. And for me, I use that as a starting point to kind of reflect and process those emotions through art. And I let those experiences kind of guide me, but then also now that I'm on the other end of that, I would say crying moment, how can I like reflect, look back and process it in a different way? And I think art is that experimental ground. So you can definitely recreate those moments or you can look at the feeling behind it, maybe doing some symbolic imagery in it or just more capturing the energy or the color palette that you feel. Again, this is why I'm trying to um, highlight the work in disturbing artists, because for those who may be new to art creation space, those art reflection cards give so many good prompts and ideas on how to explore your own experiences. And I really want to highlight, though, that like any medium of art can be a way for people to process and reflect. Like, um, sometimes it's as easy as photography. Well, photography is not easy, but it's a good starting point for some people if they're wanting to get in creative spaces because phones tend to have a lot of um, really easy digital tools on it to edit and apps and blah, blah, blah. But there's also um, like poetry or um, baking or even if you like sports, right? Like you can just focus on whatever your passion is and let that guide how you process and reflect your feelings. Agreed, 100%. And with those those art reflection cards, there's no, you don't have to be some great artist to use them. You can be, you can be any level of art. You don't never have touched a canvas in your life but you can still go for them and have fun with them right absolutely and that's that's kind of the point right like art is a space that is to help reduce i would say barriers to participation and access for me i i only found my voice through art was because the traditional systems weren't working. And believe me, my first um, few years painting, they did not look anywhere near where they are now, but that's because I've <laughs> spent a lot of time developing and practicing it. But art is one of those things that is supposed to be empowering and so subjective, right? Like what's good to someone else is not someone's cup of tea, but that's, that's the power of art. Because when you find an audience that resonates with your work, it has so much more impact. And so just keep that in mind where if you're excited and passionate about wanting to try art, go for it. Because if you don't, I think you're missing out on a chance to really explore something fun, creative and therapeutic. For sure. I mean, very, very, a little bit off topic, but um, so we changed the, uh, call it a campaign a while back. We got to talk about it and we basically, um, we have this promenade along the wall um, by the sea. And this is, it's probably about a, like a meter high wall. It's a cement wall. Um, a lot of people were walking along the wall and it's along the sea, listen to the waves, check boats out, see a lot of cargo ships very beautiful area and we had a talk about a campaign the one day and we rocked up with a whole bunch of chalk and we wanted to just fill the wall or as much of the walks as kilometers long but we wanted to fill as much of the wall as possible with um mental health quotes images um sayings happy messages you want to leave to people and it was incredible to see how many people got involved with it and grabbed a chalk and drew, whether they drew a semicolon or they drew a smiley face or they wrote a message to a loved one or they just wrote, 
um, you know, happy little quotes that they find on, you know, Instagram or whatever the case may be. And it was, it was quite fulfilling in a way to see this gathering of people expressing themselves on a, on a chalk, with chalk on a cement wall by the sea. And it had a really big impact with the amount of individuals that came to watch it. And I think this is a, also another small minute way of showing that, you know, expressing yourself in whatever way possible has an impact. Yeah, I think that that's such a really good example because again, um, when we think about like art or just communication, sometimes it has to be something so concrete, like I made a painting or I wrote a poetry book, but sometimes it's also just like, hey, I want to do something good that feels nice in the moment. So let's add a beautiful little message to this wall and using chalk is a great example because the rain will wash it away. But doing that act in the moment is I think one of those small things that we need to do to help preserve our mental health and just feel good in those um, um, those times when we're supposed to be present. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just being present in the moment is a big, big thing. Um, I just have a few, few more questions I want to ask, um, just to, to learn a little bit more about you, just to get to know you a bit better so we can know a little bit more about the starting artists. And in short, um, what is one of the proudest moments you've had in your in your career or your activism journey or things like that oh my proudest moments um for me i'm somebody who honestly sees um I see like the mountain, the distance, but I, I, I'm, I'm so hypocritical because I say appreciate those moments, but then I'm not very good at appreciating them. Yeah. I think, <laughs> um, I think there's been so many ones I should be appreciating more. Like I was able to release um, starving artist publications, and of course, um, I was able to get recognition from uh, the Princess Diana Legacy Award. Um, from Prince Harry and Prince William, but then also um, the King Hamad Award for Sustainable Development Goals. And I think that the industry recognition and validation alongside just those personal connections and people coming up at events or um, on social media that say that the work resonates with them, I think that those all all of those moments combined together makes me proud because I really see that impact at both a macro and micro scale. Firstly, congratulations! There's already some really incredible awards, but I, I resonate with you when you say the interactions you've had with people and when people appreciate work that you've done and they they see your side of your, your point of view. Um, and I think what's important to put out there as well is when starting something and starting a, an activist journey or starting anything for that matter, you, I think it's important not to lose yourself in the journey. Um, you know, as soon as you reach a pivotal moment, I think it's important to take a moment and resonate with that, uh, that accomplishment that you've reached and be like, okay, I've, I've gotten this far already. This is a this is a proud moment, and you, people got to start learning, I guess, to be proud of themselves. Um, and I think there's got a lot in terms of arrogance and um, being proud of oneself. And I think people need to start learning that being proud isn't a bad thing, and like being proud about yourself. So, just a little side message is: if you're ever out there and you're starting an activist journey, or you're starting a sport, a sport, or you're getting involved in arts, whatever the case may be. Take note of the, the moments that you feel proud of and resonate with them and remember them because you don't want to get lost and then lose some sort of motivation. If you're losing that motivation, you can always go back to resonate with that. But in short, I, I think that you got to be proud of yourself in every little bit. And I'm, I'm sure you, when looking back and see you, you can be really proud of yourself, for everything you achieved. Um, is there any other future projects or collaborations or anything else that you have maybe in the pipeline that's coming up that people will listen to the podcast and get involved with? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of projects on the go right now. Um, currently, I have um, two exhibitions up for um, 
why am I blanking? Uh, gender and <laughs> menstruation rights with period equity. So we're really looking at um, women's bodies and how can we use art as a way to talk about destigmatizing menstrual health. Um, we also have another exhibition coming up called The Body Remembers that looks at gender rights, safety, and um, female, I would say, experiences surrounding those themes. So if anyone wants to submit to that, that's great. Um, we also have projects, so many projects, but they're also important to me. Uh, climate and mental health. So we're doing a lot of work in this space, especially around art activism as a sustainable practice, but then again, trying to make more people-centered solutions around climate. And I think that if anybody wants to get involved, please just send an email to the starving artists. We would love your support, whether it be um, on social media or on um, participating in a project or an exhibition or volunteering with us. Uh, we would really just have any opportunity to help get young people involved in these spaces. I often think that our voices as young people are either not heard at very large levels or they're organized and says hey we have a young person here they smile they take pictures but they don't necessarily listen so the more young people we can get to disrupt the table is always better agreed i mean young people are, are really powerful and there's lots coming towards the world um with the generations to come and i'll just remind you guys again every all the information um, the website, the Instagram will be in the description. So you can always go check it out and send the starving artist email, get involved. It looks like something really, really interesting and really, really cool. And like we mentioned earlier, you don't have to be an artist. You can always just give it a go and figure it out. Um, but thank you so much, Ali, for everything. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, is there any last little bit of advice or something you want to throw out there that you forgot or something you want to leave um, for the listeners today? Um, okay, last thing I would say is just try it, especially for art. You um, miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And I do believe that if you just send that email, um, try a new art form, or even just go to somebody in your community that you admire and be like, hey, I want to get involved in this. How can I go about it? It's worth trying and just keep on trying until you find something that works. Um, it took me a long time to get to where I'm at now, but I mean, if I don't, um, if I didn't try, I wouldn't be here. But at this time, I have so much more room to go and grow. So I'm, I'm exactly the same. We need to keep on going and keep on trying to try every opportunity that we can. And maybe art is that way you're going to do that. So I'll leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful thank you so much Addie. i wish you all the best for everything in the future and it was lovely chatting to you and thank you everyone that's been listening to our podcast and until next time be kind to yourself